Welcome to the Sanctuary of Liberty Baptist Church of Chicago. We are so excited that you tuned in for Friday Night Word. Over the past several years, we've been blessed by you, your comments, your encouragement for our media ministry. You may feel that we have helped you, but we want you to know you've been a blessing to us. And because of that, the Lord put in our spirit to do Friday night word. This is an opportunity as you come to the close of your week to hear a word from God that carries you through the weekend and into the next week. We know that weekends can be hectic and sometimes we may forget to tune in on Sunday. And so this is yet another opportunity for God to speak to you on what he has specifically for you. We pray that Friday night word is a blessing to you. I have been praying for you. I may not know some of you all's names. I may never see your face. But I want you to know I have been praying that this moment bless you, liberate, and transform your life. We are excited to have you as part of the family of Liberty Baptist Church of Chicago. And for those of you that often hear it, and those of you that may be hearing this for the first time, we never start a worship service here at Liberty Baptist Church without this affirmation. Something that is great for Sunday and only for Sunday. But we declare today that this word is good for Friday. And so without any further ado, I declare friends and family, it's church time. It's church time. Oh, yes, it's church time. Welcome to Friday Night Word. Be blessed. Go ahead and bless him. Come on and bless him. Don't wait for me to have to be crazy. Give God some praise today. Has he been good to you? He did not come down from the cross. I, I got a praise. I got a praise and I got to get it out. I got a praise. When I think about Jesus and what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I do dance, 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 all night. Oh, when I think about Jesus and what he's done for me, when I think about Jesus and how he set me free, I do dance, 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 all night. For the Holy Ghost Party, Liberty Baptist Church don't stop. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
All right, all right, all right, all right. We thank God for this day. Do you thank God for this day? How many y'all to know to God be the glory? God be the glory for the things he has done. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen, amen, amen. We thank God for this day. Um, Dave and Joe, take me down a little bit. Take me down a little bit. Take me down a little bit. That's why I didn't sing as much, because I was up a little high. Take me down a little bit. Maybe in the, maybe in the monitors that are feeding back to me. Thank you, that's perfect, that's perfect. We thank God for this day. It's always good to give individuals their flowers while they are with us. Why don't we put our hands together for the matriarch of our choir, Sister Dorothy Peaches. Come on. Tell her thank you this morning. Tell her thank you this morning. We thank God for you, Sister Peaches. And let us put our hands together for our choir. We thank God for you today. For those of you that are visiting with us today, we want you to know that at Liberty Baptist Church, we don't wait to Easter to thank God that he did not come down from the cross. We just might sing that during Christmas because it's true. Because it's worthy of such great truth. Um, we're going to call an audible this morning at the end of service. Cornelius, we're going to go out of here. Oh, he did not come down from the cross. There is a word from the Lord today. In the sixth chapter of Isaiah the first eight verses. Isaiah 6, the first eight verses. And I'm delighted to see, we want to really get these two new members active um, with us in their proper capacities. I'm delighted to see Ezel Rowe, who is an ordained deacon from Metropolitan Missionary Baptist Church. I'm glad to see him with his red tie on today. You getting ready. Come on, let's put our hands together. All right, now we're going to put that suit jacket and some gloves on you, and you'll be ready to roll. You'll be ready to roll. I'm also delighted to see uh, Brother Jesse Reed, who I had the opportunity to ordain some 20 years ago with his red tie on today. Come on, Brother Reed, let them see you. Y'all have now been put on notice. Y'all have been put on notice. We thank God for all of you here today. Won't everybody who is able to stand, won't you please stand in reverence to the reading of God's holy word. And as is our custom, won't you hold your Bibles high and repeat after me. This is, is. The, word the word of God. It has liberating yes. and transforming power. Transforming power. I, will God I will praise God for this preaching moment. This preaching moment. And I declare that after this moment, that I shall never, ever be the same. God be praised. In Isaiah 6, 1 through 8, in the New Revised Standard Version, these words are faithfully recorded. In the year 
that King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voice of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted. Then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word, for edification of our hearts and our souls. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. There are certain Sundays when I can tell that y'all been to Sunday school. Because there are certain Sundays that while I'm reading the text, I can tell it is one of your favorite texts. Because you are amening and reading it with me as you've done today. I can also tell when I'm reading the text that you have great anticipation, uh, where when I read a word or so, you've pretty much gotten your head, that's where he's going. <laughs> and I could detect joy in your voice when I said, here am I, send me. Oh, the swell in your spirits where you said, I know where the pastor's going today. But I ain't going to that verse. I want to take you to verse 1. In the year King Uzziah died. I want to talk today for a few moments from the subject, when your king dies. In the year that King Uzziah died. When your king dies. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about you. Everybody in here got a king and it ain't Jesus. When your king dies, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. Our hearts are rejoicing in you. And God, lest we forget the gravity of this great Sunday. Not only what is taking place now, but will take place this afternoon. And for that, God, we say thank you for being so good to us. Now, God, touch the words of my mouth. Let them not be of my own understanding nor my opinion. But, Lord, let them fall fresh from you. Now, that someone may be liberated and transformed by the renewing of their mind. This indeed is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When your king dies. In Isaiah 6, the prophet 
Isaiah recalls the vision that ushers in his prophetic ministry. Not simply a vision, but a supernatural event. Well, God meets Isaiah face to face. Isaiah finds himself in what is known throughout the Old Testament and later in Revelation, as we've been studying on Wednesday night, the ancient throne room of God. Uh, this call from Isaiah is so intense um, that they are not angels that simply show up, but God himself enters the throne room. The throne room of God that although is magnificent, seemingly is inadequate because it cannot contain the glory of God's role. God is in the throne room in such a majestic fashion uh, that the Bible says that his raiment fills the temple. And at the presence of God, the seraphim who are flying to and fro, supernatural creatures, in the presence of God, they cry, holy, 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 to the Lord of hosts. Smoke fills the temple, indicative of the Spirit of God in the place. And the smoke encompasses all that are in the temple and fills it accordingly. What a supernatural event for Isaiah to see God face to face. To understand, beloved, the gravity of this call and the need for such a supercharged spiritual event. Think about it, beloved. We think we just had a supercharged spiritual event, but nothing could compare if the Lord himself, as Sister Peaches was wrapping up her last verse, would sit down in this sanctuary. Such a great raiment that would go across King Drive and such smoke that I could no longer see your faces. So I understand the gravity of this call and the need for this supercharged event. We must consider the timing and circumstances of the call of Isaiah. The Bible, as you study it, more intently will always give you specific dates of why something is happening. And when you investigate those dates, you can further understand the text. Isaiah is intentional with telling us that all of this occurs in the year King Uzziah died. God bless you. <laughs> Think about it, beloved. Does not see this until the year King Uzziah died. When we understand the historical context of the great ruler Uzziah, we understand that prior to Uzziah's death, Uzziah represented the stability of the kingdom of Judah. Let me break it down. The economy was good. Stock market was high. Mortgage rates were low. Everybody had a job. The country was secure, and things were moving along mighty nice. Uzziah takes the throne at the age of 16. And during this time, not only were they stable, but Judah expanded its territory. And as it expanded significantly 
Along with it came the restoration of its military and the strengthening of its politics. Us, our beloved, represented the good old days. Historians suggest that Judah's success during this period was comparable to the age of his precursor, his ancestor, Solomon. However, Uzziah was overcome with leprosy. And as he is overcome with leprosy, he spends seven years, seven years with a dual reign with his son, Jotham. Jotham couldn't handle it like Uzziah could handle it. But as long as Uzziah was alive, Judah was secure. But after seven years of leprosy, Uzziah dies. King Uzziah dies in the year 742. 740 years before the birth of Christ. And during this period, uncertainty rose up in Judah. Not only uncertainty internally, but externally. There was a Babylonian ruler by the name of Tiglath Pileser. And Pileser had already taken over. I got to do this because some of y'all don't listen to Bible class. Tiglath Pileser had already taken over Judah's cousins in the northern kingdom of Israel. And he was breathing down the necks of Judah. And Judah is facing this threat with their now great ruler dead, ruled by an incapable son. He dominates Israel. He dominates the land. This represented for Judah a time to get their attention. Beloved, it's an unfortunate state of affairs, but sometimes our kings got to die for God to get our attention. Maybe there was not no fault for a smoke-filled throne room while the times were going well. And so God, every now and then, got to get your attention. And the thing that you think you needed most, God's got to take it away from you so you can realize that you need to trust in the Lord. So, so, beloved, make no poetical mistake about it. Isaiah's not just giving you a date in the year King Uzziah died. Isaiah, if I could paraphrase, is saying when all hell broke loose, when, when something was breathing on my neck, I finally, we finally saw the Lord. We finally now have gone through enough to understand what we see is not enough and now the only thing we got to lean on is the Lord. Has anybody here ever lived long enough to understand the only thing you have to lean on is the Lord? I heard, I heard a preacher say uh, just a few days ago in one of the Facebook clips, he, and I agree with him, he said the church ought to stop talking about he'll never put more on you than you can bear. If you've ever been through it, it's way more than I can bear. You better stop telling folk that because the Lord will put something on you more you can bear. But the reason why he does is so you can stop acting a fool and see him and he'll take you through some stuff so he can bring you out. So, so we see here in text this miraculous, this supernatural event does not just come from poetical dating of historical context of Isaiah's call, but it comes from the standpoint that we need to understand that when the king dies, isn't it good to know that when your king dies, the Lord shows up? 
uh, when you think that your resources are gone, that's when the Lord will show up. When your friends don't show up, that's when the Lord will show up. When your money is funny, that's when the Lord will show up. So he shows up for Isaiah. In the year, King Uzziah died. Beloved, we got some strange gods in here. You know what they are. You know what they are. I'm going to keep on saying it. That thing that you're so busy to do when you get out of church that you can't give God some praise, that's a king. That's a strange God. That, 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 so I'm glad some of y'all here, but some of y'all I ain't seen in a month. I don't know who you are, but, but whatever been keeping you away for four weeks because you've given out the priority, that's a strange God because I declare as soon as you get sick, you're going to be on the prayer line looking for Pastor Hunt. Sooner you need a job, you're going to say, Lord, Pastor, please help me. Give me some oil. Put on my Bible. Got some strange gods. I'm not talking about your necessity. I'm talking about your excuses. And only you know what your excuses are. We got some strange gods. Strange gods. Uh, you, you, you done finally got a job. You prayed for the job. Now you're too tired on the weekend to give God some praise. That's a strange God. Uh, you, you, you've, been, you've been brought out of your sickness. And, and I remember when you called because you had cancer. Now you're strutting and you got to glide in your stride. But now strutting too much on Saturday to get up on Sunday morning and give God some praise. That's a, that's a strange God. Oh, I'm going somewhere today. Strange God, strange God. You, now you got your education. Cried all night long. Now you got a PhD, master's degree, JD. Now you ain't got time for G-O-D. That's a strange God. That's a, that's a strange God. Oh, now you're popular. You, you, know, you know everybody. You got a network, and you got to be a part of this society. You got to be a part of this thing, but, but, but that's a strange God because before you had those friends, I think the songwriter said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear, all because we do not care. No, and I, I'm going to keep it real. I got some strange gods too. And every now and then, I got to speak to them strange gods. I got to give all I got to the Lord. LeBron James, you ain't paying me. I got to cut the NBA off. I got to stop streaming all night long looking at something. I got to get on my knees. I got some strange gods too. All of us. The issue is not to have strange gods. The issue is don't recognize your strange God. Well, if you're wondering why you continually live a life of emptiness, it seems like you're never satisfied. That's because you got some strange gods. Because you, you coming to church looking for the choir to sing your, your favorite song, looking for me to kick my shoes off and throw my suit all across the church. And if, if I don't do that, that's not church. See, you, you feel that way because you got some strange gods. And the strangest God we can have is ourselves. And there is a strange God. We have to really be careful. I know we got to get to this hard nation. I'm going to get out your way quick today. Even when we love the Lord. The strange God can be the church. Because our existence in church is not our spirituality. It's about our position. You know who you are. If you're here because you got a title, you got a strange God. If you're only singing because it's your favorite song, you got a strange God. 
If you're more hung up in the style of clothes than the content of one's spirit, you got a strange God. So we got to be careful. I tell our leaders all the time, and I share with them, they say, well, Pastor, let's, I'll just give an example. Pastor, my, my child is sick or my husband is sick and I can't be here. Well, don't let the church be your strange God. You got to go take care of your son. You got to go take care of your husband. Don't, don't let a strange God prevent you from doing what God has for you. And understand, because God is good, when you get back, we'll still be alive. So you got a strange God when you think that if you check out that the church won't move on. I, I'm not crazy. I'm, I'm the seventh pastor. There were six dudes before me that were here. And when I'm gone, there'll be another eight. We got some strange gods. Well, we think it can't go on without us. We got to tell folks, we appreciate you. But because God is good, we don't need you. Don't ever think that you so holy, you so gifted, that God can't move on without you. He been doing it since he said, let there be light. And there was like, you didn't flick the switch. The Lord flicked the switch. That wasn't on my paper. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Our king must die so God can get our attention. On a serious note, some of y'all crying about some stuff that has left you. Are you still here this morning? That means it didn't kill you. And just maybe, God moved that thing so you can see God and God alone. I gaze at the text this morning, affirms the fact that for us to maximize our spiritual potential, how many of us really want to maximize our spiritual potential? Because in maximizing our spiritual potential, we can live an abundant life. We can't live in abundance without maximizing our spiritual potential. In order to do so, our kings must die. And when our kings die, there are several things that will come to fruition. When your king dies, you'll be in the presence of the Lord. Not only on Sunday, but when you get up in the morning, you'll feel the presence of the Lord. When you run in to life's barriers, you won't get so upset because you'll be in the presence of the Lord. That's what happened in the text. When Isaiah's king died, he found himself open to be in the presence of the Lord. And when you're in the presence of the Lord, the Holy Ghost will fill your room. See, smoke in the Old Testament is indicative of the Spirit. So not only will you be in His presence, but you'll be in the Spirit. And when you operate in the Spirit, your decisions are changed. I, I think the old songwriter said, He make me want to walk right. He make me want to talk right. He make me want to do right. When you maximize, your spiritual potential. You will find yourself in the presence of God. When your king dies, God will be present with you. You won't have to always look over your shoulder and try to find God. God will be there. And the Holy Spirit will guide you. This is your own barometer test, and most of y'all passed the test today. When your king dies, 
and God is around you and the spirit moves in you, the text says that the angels cried, holy, holy, holy to the Lord of hosts. See, if your king hasn't died, you don't know how to worship. But when you think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he done for you, when your king dies and you realize it wasn't you, but if it hadn't been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? It don't matter what the choir sing. It don't matter what the preacher preach. It doesn't matter what the deacon prays. I thank God that he brought me from a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. But your king got to die for you to be a worshiper. I like the old school in this regard. I used to know that the spirit of the Lord was moving because old mother get happy. When she get happy in the church, she wasn't worrying about her hat. Hat went all across the room because it didn't matter how her hair looked, wig hanging sideways because when God's been good to you, you ain't got time to be cute. Because there's something about the power of God. So until your king dies, you can't experience real worship. You stay bottled up because uh, uh, your king is all about you. Your king is all about, well, uh, well that's not how we do. Uh, it, don't, it don't matter what we do, what you do. So when then. Lord fills the throne room. When our kings die, we can see God more, hear God more, and we be better worshipers. Finally, this is the last thing. We, when God is with us, how many of y'all know he'll make a way? Finally, Isaiah's response to this moment, as he has a bird's eye view of God, is met with trepidation. Has the Lord ever done something for you and you've met it with trepidation? I, I know I have. Lord, are you sure you want me to do this? Uh, maybe you can find another preacher down the street. I didn't sign up for this, Lord. And so this moment that Isaiah has with the Lord is met with trepidation. And it sparks his humility as he states, I'm not worthy of this. I'm not worthy of the grace that's granted to me in the throne room. He says, I'm a man of unclean lips and all my partners got unclean lips. And we all from the wrong side of the tracks. Lord, why am I seeing this? I'm not in the pecking order of church hierarchy. I, my grandfather wasn't a preacher and my uncle wasn't a deacon and my mama wasn't a deacon. It's Lord, why are you looking at me? I'm not fitting the hierarchy. I'm, I'm just messed up. I just been some places I shouldn't go to, but I'm glad God can clean us up. I'm glad that when we're in the presence of God, see that's the key here. When you're not in the presence of God, you're holding on to old stuff. But God's saying he wants you to do a new thing. God didn't ask you where you grew up. God didn't ask you how much you drank and how much you smoked. All that God cares is, I got you today and I'll clean you up and I'll pick you up and I'll turn you around and I'll place your feet on solid ground. If you want to go, I'll help you go. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so today. He cleans them up. And I'm God glad today that seminary didn't qualify me. I thank God for Pastor D.L. Jackson, but Pastor Jackson couldn't qualify me. I thank God for my mother and my father, but they couldn't qualify me. I'm glad that one day I had a little talk with Jesus. I told him all about my troubles. He heard my fainting cry, and he answered by and by. Is there anybody here that's glad today that God qualified you? Oh, when he qualifies you, it doesn't matter what anybody has to say. And when he qualifies you, uh, you don't have any more excuses. 
When he qualifies you, you say, I'm ready to go to church. When he qualifies you, you say, I'm ready to feed the homeless. When he, when he qualifies you, he says, uh, you say, I'm ready to clothe the naked. When he, when he qualifies you, you're ready to have prayer for the lost on Wednesday night. Because after he got qualified, God asked a qualifying question. God says, who can I send? And who will go for us? And when your king dies, you can say, here I am send me anybody want to go today here i am send me when we answer the call we do not answer alone for those of us who experience the throne room of god i stop by to give you the good news the good news is even when your king dies, provisions have already been made for you to have a king of your own. All you got to do is reach out to him. Uh, this king has power. And come on, psalmist. For the psalmist says, when we look for our king, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and even lift them up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in not talking about mayor brandon johnson not talking about jb prixka not talking about biden kamala trump no i ain't talking about obama i'm talking about the king of glory and i got a king so lift up your heads O ye gates and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty and battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King how many of y'all want my king? And the king of glory shall come in. Can I get one more time? Who is the king of glory? Who is the king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Somebody say yeah. 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 Well, I'm going to get on to the ordination so let me wrap this thing up the king in the throne room knew that I needed another king so the king sent his son down through 42 generations he sent a king who died on Calvary's cross but this king was not like natural kings for this king did not come down from the cross just to save himself. But he decided, he decided to die just for you and me. Ain't that a good king? But I'm glad today that he didn't just die on Calvary's cross. He didn't just lay in Joseph's tomb. But oh! Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands my king will never die he's coming back again how many of y'all believe it that he's coming back again somebody say yeah yeah oh yeah my king got all power in his hand my king can turn your midnight into day my king can pick you up off of your sick bed there's not a friend like the lowly jesus no not one no not one and if we keep on living soon soon and very soon we are going 
to see the king. No more dying there. We're going. See, the old church used to shout on dying. Y'all worried about your Mercedes. You can't shout soon and very. No more dying there. We're going to see the king. No more crying there. We're going to see the king. I'm old school. I know the verse is quiet. Should there be any rivers we must cross? Should there be any mountains we must climb? God, our king, will supply all the things that we need. He'll give us strength until we reach the other side. Beloved, your king must die. There's only one king. The king of glory. We pray you enjoy this evening's Friday night word. I know that you have been blessed. And I know that you are stronger now than what you were before you tuned in. We thank you for being a part of this ministry. And if you want to give to this ministry and support to this ministry... We invite you to give through Givelify, PayPal, or Cash App. And you can also give if you do not have the monetary means. You can give to this ministry by sharing the good news and sharing this message with your family and friends and telling everyone about Friday Night Word and about Liberty Baptist Church of Chicago. We pray that God's peace will be with you until we meet again.